Welcome Bronco Nation, my game preview for Boise State versus Air Force. The 6-5 and five Boise State Broncos take on the 8-3 and three Air Force Falcons, what is now a matchup for the Mountain West Championship game. That's right, you heard me correctly. The 6-5 and five Boise State Broncos take on a team that was destined for a New Year's Six Bowl game. And somehow this matchup between two teams who have had very different seasons, very different trajectories of their seasons, somehow end up playing a game at the end of the year that will likely determine who will head to the Mountain West Championship game. Either way, for either of these teams to have a chance at getting to it, one of them has to win. Whoever wins this game will have a shot. Whoever loses is going to be out of that competition. Now, while the exact tiebreaker scenarios are complex, what seems to be the most clear route right now is Boise State wins versus Air Force and UNLV defeats San Jose State. In that case, it is a guarantee that Boise State would move on to play in the Mountain West Championship game. However, if San Jose State is able to beat UNLV this weekend, then you would have a situation where you would have a three-way tie between Boise State, assuming they can win versus Air Force, UNLV, and San Jose State. In that case, and again, it's complex, but reading up on the Mountain West rules, what seems to be the most clear indication would be that between those three teams, they would go to the computer rankings. And based on those computer rankings, the top two teams would be selected to proceed on to the Mountain West Championship game. Now, right now, Boise State and San Jose State are very close. Depending on the rankings you look at, Boise State is ahead, and in some of them, San Jose State is just ahead. Either way, they're both very close to each other, so Boise State winning this game is going to be very, very important to putting themselves in that position. If they beat Air Force, there's a very, very good chance that they would end up in the Mountain West Championship game, regardless of what happens with UNLV versus San Jose State. So the 90% solution right now is whoever wins this game is going to go to the Mountain West Championship game. It won't be guaranteed until UNLV beats San Jose State, but even if San Jose State wins, if Boise State beats Air Force, they are more than likely still in regardless of that outcome. So this game is the most important game of the entire season. And I've said that a couple of times this year because at each point, that game was the most important point of the season. You know, Boise State versus Memphis was the most important game of the season for determining whether or not Boise State had a chance at a New Year's Six or not if they were headed in a very different direction. They lost, and I said that loss would lose to a head coaching change, and it did. Boise State versus Wyoming became one of the most important games of the season coming off of a bye week. Where is Boise State going to go from here? Is there still a chance for up Upward momentum. Is there still a chance for them to control their own destiny? They won that game and they pushed back and now they're in a chance to play for a Mountain West Championship game. Now this game versus Air Force is the final one that you can say is the most important part of the regular season because it's the final regular season matchup. And I am incredibly excited to get into it. So we're going to start, we're going to get through, we'll talk about uh, the series history between these two programs. We'll talk about the key players for both of these teams. We'll look at keys to the game for Boise State, what they need to do to get a win, as well as a summary and a score prediction at the end. But before we get any further in the video, I want each of you to go down in the comments, whether you're a Boise State fan or an Air Force fan, go down, let me know your thoughts. Who do you think is going to win this game? What are your score predictions? I want to hear your score predictions and any other thoughts you have on the matchup. So pause the video, give those right now, and then come back. All right, welcome back. Let's get into the rest of the video. So this is a game taking place on Friday, November 24th, directly after Thanksgiving, at 2 p.m. Mountain Central Time on FS1. And again, I can't believe that the game that is basically a prequel, you know, a pre-tournament for the Mountain West Championship game is on FS1 at 2 p.m. I don't know why this isn't on a bigger network. This is a major matchup, but as it is, 2 p.m. FS1, Boise State right now being favored quite heavily, given a 68.9% chance of winning and also being favored by six points. It definitely helps that Boise State is at home, but Air Force, this is a game that can go either way as the series history proves between these two teams. Right now, Boise State an edge with seven wins in the series to four losses, but it has been back and forth, and the last couple of games have definitely been back and forth. The first game in the series, Boise State won in 2011, 37-26 uh, to win, still when Moore was, uh Doug Martin was still here with the team. Boise State won that first matchup, and they won the second one in 2013 as well. But then Air Force got Boise State in 2014. Boise State goes up. They play with Grant Hendrick at 
Air Force and that loss, Grant Hendricks says that that loss really changed the trajectory of the season. After that loss, it he came in with a different mindset and a different approach. He said, we're not going to go with Ryan Finley. We're going to stick with you. And he credits that loss with putting Boy State on a track to a Fiesta Bowl at the end of the season. However, that was the first of many losses in a row to, to Air Force, and Boise State really couldn't figure out the Falcons. Boy, Air Force would go on to win two more games to win three in a row before Boise State finally, in 2017, figured out the Falcons, won a game 44-14, to and then would go on to win the next three after that to win four in a row. And then 2021, Air Force coming off of the COVID year, comes to Boise, beats Boise at home. Some questionable referee decisions as part of that. That was a bad year for referee decisions. They lost Boise State the game versus Oklahoma State, and they impacted the game versus Air Force, but a loss is a loss, and Air Force got that win. And then in 2022, the last time these two teams played, Boise State narrowly beating Air Force at their stadium, 19-14. to So will this be another flip-flop? Is it a chance for Air Force to get back on top? Again, Everything hangs in the balance when these two teams meet and play on Friday. So for key players of the game for this matchup, uh, for Boise State, and these three players are all going to be the key players for this offense because this offense is going to determine the outcome of this game. Air Force's defense, Air Force's offense is going to be hard to stop. Boise State's defense is going to have to get lucky in some situations. But Boise State can still win this game if they play the right offense and their offensive players step up. So the key to that, the number one key for that offense, is going to be Taylor Green. The quarterback that reestablished himself as the starter after Maddox Madsen went down with an injury, came back last week, definitely looked rusty the first few drives, but that's to be expected. He's been splitting reps in practice with Maddox Madsen. He's been splitting reps in game with Maddox Madsen. That was his first time truly starting a game where he didn't have someone breathing down his neck since the Washington game. And in many ways, it was a season opener performance, and we saw that. And he got stronger as the game got on, definitely missed some passes, but we started to see this offense clicking. Bush Hamden and nobody now looking over his shoulder, breathing down his neck uh, when he's trying to call this offense. And the offense finally looked like what we thought it would look like at the beginning of the year. The three-headed attack of Taylor Green, George Lonnie, and Ashton Genty was working to perfection. Now, Taylor Green was covered up pretty well, struggling to get out on uh, some of his runs. So hopefully that can improve versus Air Force. But this offense was moving very, very efficiently. And those three players that I named are going to be my key players for Boise State. Taylor Green, 1,298 yards passing, eight touchdowns, six interceptions, also 321 yards rushing, and six touchdowns. He's definitely going to need to continue to improve the passing part of his game. But if the offense is called correctly, that's not so important. He takes a lot of heat off of the running game by the fact that he is a weapon that you have to stop. I mean, they were scheming to stop him. Utah State knew that he was an option, and Air Force is going to do that as well. So they're used to stopping their own option offense in their own defense, you know, when they're playing the, the twos versus the ones. But this is a little bit of a different look than the typical Air Force option. It's more of a power back center with the option to have the quarterback pull the ball and run as well. But Taylor Green, whether he's putting up yardage or not, is helping out the running game because they know they have to cover him. So anytime he pulls that ball, has the potential to pull that ball, he is opening up running lanes for the running backs. Now the running backs in this offense, are going to be incredibly important, and I think it all starts with George Lonnie. Obviously, Ashton Genty is back. He came back last week. He had a great performance, 107 yards all-purpose. He had combined rushing and receiving about 20 or so receiving yards, uh, combined with about 80 or so uh, rushing yards. So good performance for him. He still doesn't look... 100% to his level. Now, he looks 100% for most running backs out there because he is an incredible running back, and putting up 107 all-purpose yards is an incredible stat, but he still didn't look like he had that Ashton Genty edge. He was still playing exceptionally, breaking tackles, making moves in open space, getting yards, but he definitely seemed like he wasn't exactly quite there, and maybe part of that was just getting back into the flow of the game. Now, after two weeks after having come back off that injury, maybe we'll see that next level step coming back in. But regardless, I think George Helani's got to be your primary starter. He's the senior on this team. The senior leadership is so important right now when you have the loss of Andy Avalos and Spencer Danielson stepping in, and the senior leadership, I think, really helped set Boise State up for success in last week's performance. But George Helani, not just from a leadership perspective, but from a player perspective as well. Everybody got so infatuated with Ashton Genty, who is a legacy back. If he stays with Boise State, doesn't get drawn elsewhere by NIL, he's going to go down as one of the greatest backs in Boise State running back history. But so should George Holland. 
Helani. Before Ashton Genty got here, George Helani was doing that. George Helani's been sidelined by a lot of injuries in his career, including this season, but after coming back from injury, in the last three games, he's put up over 100 all-purpose yards in every single one of them, and last week, he had 178 yards rushing and two touchdowns versus Utah State. On the season, 478 yards so far and five touchdowns. He's also put up 14 receptions for 137 yards. George Helani is the leader of this running offense. Ashton Genty is an incredible running back, and they both complement each other extremely well, but they're also very different styles. George Helani adds a element in the passing game that also Ashton Genty does as well, but I think he's got one step better as far as his hands go. He's got great maneuverability in open space. He's got the power, and he's 100% right now and has something to prove after a whole season so far that he's been watching from the sideline. He is hungry to prove that he is the running back of this offense and to contribute to this team. So George Helani is definitely going to be the starter for Boise State, but Ashton Genty is going to have a heavy role as well. Passed 1,000 yards rushing last Last game. If he hadn't gotten injured versus Wyoming, I think we would have seen him getting close to that 1,500 plus, maybe 2,000 plus all-purpose yards for sure. I think he would have topped that with a potential to maybe push up towards those 2,000 plus yard rushing numbers as well. However, the injury laid him out, took him out for a few games, but he's back now, 107 all-purpose last week, 1,006 yards rushing on the year, uh, also 12 touchdowns, and then he has been a major threat in the passing game, mostly on the screen, making moves in the open field. 32 receptions for 419 yards and four touchdowns. Now, he was held in check last year versus Air Force when he got the first start when Halani went down. So an interesting stat here is that Halani hasn't played versus Air Force since 2020. There's been two seasons where he has been injured at one point or the other when they were playing Air Force, and he hasn't been the primary back for them. So this is George Halani also another opportunity to show that he still got it versus Air Force, a chance to step up and have a big performance versus Air Force, a team that is on the rivalry chart for Boise State, it'll never be a true rivalry because of the great respect that Boise State, uh, the city of Boise and the Boise State fan base has for the Air Force and the military in general, so you'll never have that hatred element. But when you talk about near peers, when you talk about programs that have stepped up and played at Boise State's level and have been very successful in the last few years, the 10-plus wins most seasons, Air Force is that team, that program in the Mountain West that's been one of the most consistent across the entire conference. So this is a program that, this is a program that you know George Lani wants to come up and show up and have a big game versus of, and it's going to be the biggest game of the season. You know he's going to step up and have a huge one. And hopefully Ashton Gente can continue to heal up and continue to show a strong performance in this matchup. The combination of all three of these players, it can't just be one guy. It can't just be one guy having a huge game. It can't just be a focus on one guy. The proper usage and combination of all three of these offensive players is what's going to be a massive key to Boise State's success in this game. We'll talk about that more when we get to the keys to the game. Uh, for Air Force, their key players are a little bit of a who's not here so much as a who's going to impact this game. Air Force's key player would have been quarterback Zach Larrier, 744 yards rushing, uh, passing so far this season, six touchdowns, two interceptions, 579 yards rushing, but he's been out with an injury since Hawaii. Now, Zach Larrier is in this game. If he's able to come back and he's healthy, it's going to be a very different potential result here for Boy State in this matchup because he adds something that is just not quite at the same level as his backup, Jensen Jones, who's played okay, but the primary reason that Air Force has lost the last couple of games, Hawaii and UNLV, has been because of Zach Larrier's absence. I don't think they would have lost those games if he had been present. Jensen Jones has passed for 160 yards and an interception, no touchdowns, and he's been a threat in the running game with 233 yards and four touchdowns with a 4.5-yard average, but he just doesn't have that next level that Zach Lario has in the running game, and he definitely doesn't have that spark that Air Force likes to use sometimes in the passing game. They'll throw it very, very rarely, but when they do, it's usually for big plays. And Zach Larrier was completing close to 60% of his passes, which is a huge number for an Air Force quarterback. Jensen Jones is kind of more of a typical get an option guy to throw the ball number with 33.3%. So you definitely don't have that same explosive catch the opponent off guard potential that you have Zach Larrier can still get it done with Jensen Jones. It's just not going to be quite as effective. For the running game, it's a similar story. Uh, Air Force's leading running back, or a fullback, but leading rusher was Emmanuel McMichael. Uh, Michael, sorry, Emmanuel Michael. 
Uh, 733 yards rushing and nine touchdowns, but he's out. He's been injured as well. He didn't play in the Hawaii game or the UNLV game, so he's also been out, and another reason why they've struggled. Uh, substituting for him, definitely at a higher rate than the quarterback substitution, has been Dylan Carson. 347 yards rushing, a touchdown, a 6.4 yard average uh, so far throughout his season, and versus Hawaii, he had 87 yards and a 6.7 yard average, and versus UNLV, he had 104 yards rushing and a 6.5 yard average so he is going to be very very difficult to stop he's definitely stepping up and reaching a similar potential level that Emmanuel was but the loss of those two leaders key players for Air Force if they're not back for this game and I don't know maybe they'll be able to come back the right before but as of right now they are out and they didn't play versus UNLV so if those two players are out it's going to be to Boyd State's advantage because these new guys that are in especially at the quarterback position are going to give this defense some opportunities another guy that I'm going to mention for Air Force just so we have three active players that are actually set to play in this game is John Eldridge the third he had a lot of high expectations for him coming into the season he was listed as one of the best running backs in the conference some charts even had him ahead of either Halani or Genti depending on where you saw those guys rack and stack uh, but so far this season while he's been an explosive threat he hasn't been a consistent one 515 yards rushing uh, six touchdowns 7.3 yard average but he hasn't been their primary option but he definitely has shown that he is able to explode for big gains if you you're not able to get him with the first couple of tackles. And this is a guy that had, I, I don't know if you all remember that highlight tape, I think it was versus Wyoming, where, I mean, he hurdled a guy, juked another, busted through a tackle, and made it into the end zone. So this is a guy with next level ability, Not I'm not necessarily saying NFL, but, you know, he can get into that second level of the defense, and he can hurt you. So Boise State's going to make sure need to make sure that he doesn't do that versus them in this game because he is an explosive talent that Boise State's going to have to try and stop in this matchup. So getting to the keys of the game for Boise State versus Air Force. Well, number one key is be Air Force at their own game. Air Force is going to come out and they're going to run their option. They're going to run heavy. They're one of the best rushing teams in college football. They're going to run it down your throat, and they're going to drag your defense out. By the time you get to the second half, your defense is going to be tired and exhausted and beat up, and they're going to be falling off their feet and Air Force is going to run all over you. But Boise State can do the same thing. This is not the Boise State offense of past years, which were definitely built around that passing game. This is a Boise State offense that thrives in the running game. They thrive on going out, matching their offensive line, which is so improved. The most improved unit uh, for Boise State coming through the last three seasons has just done an incredible job of stepping up and actually being a force for these incredible running backs, not just the running backs succeeding on their own anymore, the offensive line is stepping up with them and creating holes for these guys to, to get to the next level. Boise State's offense is now built around that. They're built around coming out, smacking you in the mouth, and running it down your throat. Long, extended drives with multiple runs to get the def get the Air Force defense tired, giving your defense a chance to rest. That is going to be such an important key for Boise State. If they can do that, if they can draw out their drives, reduce Air Force's strength. Air Force's best strength is coming through their offense and beating you up. Now they have an outstanding defense. They really do. 176.7 uh, yards passing, 88.5 yards rushing. But where they beat you, where they wear you down is with their offense. The longer that Boise State can keep that offense on the sidelines and get their own defense rested up, the better case scenario this is for Boise State to go out there and get a big win. So that comes from running the right scheme. Bush Hamden coming in. I, he played, a, he called an incredible game versus Utah State. It was the offense we thought we would see coming into the season. Focus on that running game, using the running game to set up the pass, being very intentional with the play calling to break up the defense and force them into certain positions where the passing game now had opportunities. It was a great game plan that Boise State came in versus Utah State with. Hopefully, they don't look at this defense with Air Force and say there's opportunities in the passing game. We're going to hit you through the air. That didn't work versus Washington, and it's not going to work versus this team. Not just because Air Force is a good defense that will stop you that way as well, but because Boise State's strength isn't built that way. Their offense isn't built for that right now. Taylor Green is not a passing quarterback. He can get the job done through the air to a certain extent, but that is not where his strength is. He's still struggling on chemistry with these wide receivers to the point where he had a wide open player that had beat the defense by 10 or 15 yards the last game, and he still couldn't hit him. So there is a clear lack of chemistry here. Your number one leading, leading wide receiver, Eric McAllister, is no longer with the team. Penry's hurt. Cobbs is hurt. You've got young guys that are getting some of their first reps of the season, of their careers out there. You know, Austin Bolt, uh, 
Prince Strawn is getting, he had limited reps throughout the, the season. It's kind of stepped up as a target. Uh, but, you know, he it doesn't have that same chemistry because he's a young guy. Really, right now, your veteran out there is Billy Bowens. And while he is a reliable guy, he hasn't been a number one target throughout his career at Boise State. So he can get the job done. But like Taylor Green, he's not going to be that necessarily consistent every time explosive threat for you so Boise State's strength is not in the passing game they've got to come in with the game plan look at Air Force's strength it's it's stopping in the run game and say you know what we don't care we're going to beat you at that game because that is how we get this win in this matchup so big key number one for Boise State is use those three key players that I talked about effectively to go out ram it down Air Force's throat strength on strength Boise State's rushing strength versus D Air Force's defensive rushing strength and force them to beat you at their at, at their best game, Boise State's got to do that if they want to go out and get a win in this matchup. Uh, number two is scheme for the big plays. This goes to the defense. Obviously, the offense, you got to scheme for the running game to allow to set up the big pass. But in the defensive-wise as well, Air Force is going to beat you offensively. They're going to do that. This is a young, inexperienced defense for Boise State. With not a lot of depth across the board, or at least experienced depth across the board. You've got a defensive coach right now who has had split attention. You're, you know, He's still basically your defensive coordinator, even though they elevated a defensive analyst to fill that spot. Spencer Danielson is still your defensive coordinator. He's still calling the defense from the sidelines. So right now he has his attention split and it's a bad time to have attention split because this is the def the offense that you want to be the most prepared for. This Boise State doesn't face option offenses very often. Air Force is that one program that they face that has always given them heartaches no matter how good the Air Force offense is when they come to play Boise State. They have always struggled to beat them consistently throughout the years and the record shows that so this is not a program that you want to come into with a split focus so that is going to be a little bit of a detriment and air force regardless is going to get yards on you they're just going to do that they're going to make up first downs they're going to put together long elongated drives they're going to score you can't let yourself get beat down by that but what you can do is you can scheme for the big play you can scheme for the big sack the big tackle for loss the forced uh, mistake you know the the pitch that goes awry the, the interception the fumble that's what Boise State should be scheming for. Give up yards, but try and put Air Force in a position where they're going to make a mistake, where you are bringing that blitz factor where you're sending your safeties uh, down to the line of scrimmage to go and force big tackles in the backfield. I mean, you've got some guys here who, while their coverage skills have been questionable throughout the season, you've got some great tacklers in your secondary. Tubner, who, again, his coverage hasn't been the best all season. He definitely is vulnerable versus that, but he is an outstanding tackler in the open space. He had some huge tackles versus Utah State, including a fourth, uh, third down stop was a fourth down stop, but a big stop last week versus Utah State. Uh, Ty Bensfield is one of the fastest players on the team, and he was all over the place. I mean, he had he had tackles for loss and sacks last week. I think he had uh, two tackles for loss and two sacks, if I'm remembering that right. Um, yeah, two sacks and 2.5 tackles for loss last week. So he is a player that's going to go out and make those plays in the backfield if you can scheme appropriately for that. So Boise State shouldn't be so concerned about consistently stopping the option because they're not going to be able to do that. But they should be focusing on making the big play. If they can get Air Force in second and long, second and 14, third and 12, that kind of those kind of numbers, they're going to have to force them to go to the air. And remember, Zach Larry is not here. And this guy, Jensen Jones, he's not even their thrower. They bring in a couple other guys throw the ball but none of them are really up to the task there so if Boise State can force Air Force into situations long yardage situations where they're not their offense is not designed for lost of yards Boise State is going to have a good chance of coming in here and winning this game so don't get discouraged by the given up long plays just be ready to go out there and scheme it up so that your players are in a position to make that big loss yardage or that turnover and the last key is return games got to come alive for Boise State Boise State's offense and defense is going to be in a battle of their lives versus this team. The special teams is going to be so key. Obviously, the punting game and the field goal units are going to be a big part of winning this game. But Boise State doesn't have to worry about those. I mean, the field goal unit, the coverage of the, the protection of the kicker has been a little bit of a concern, but that seems to have been shored up. 
The kicker, Jonah Dalmez, is going to go out and have an incredible game, like he always does. He's going to put Boise State in a position to win it. And James Ferguson Reynolds, when he's called out there to punt, hopefully he doesn't have to do it too often. But when he does, you know that he's going to perform at a high level. The question marks for this defense, for this special teams, uh, has been their coverage, has been their return. And specifically, while they seem to have gotten a little bit better since the Fresno game and stopping the return, though Utah State, they did give up several long punt returns, the, th- the part that Boise State all season long has struggled to do, has struggled to perform well in, is their own return game. And it's really surprising for a program that you look historically has always prided themselves on that. I mean, obviously, recent history, you've got some great returners and Avery Williams and Khalil Shakir, but you go back in Boise State history, uh, they, Boise State has prided themselves on that punt return, that kick return game, and they've always had explosive plays that have set up their offense to go out and perform well. Well, that is going to be key. Boise State's got to find that level. They've been looking for it all year, and you know what? They've gone back to what they started the season at what caused George Lana to get injured in the first place, but they're at a point right now where there's not many games left in the season anyway, and they're trying to get anything they can out of him to go out and perform in these matchups, and George Lani's back in the punt return. And there is a reason for that, and the reason when you look at it is that Boise State's other punt returners have been averaging 3.5 yards or less, and both of them are injured, Penry and Cobbs. They're not playing. So now you're back to Alani. The longest punt return Boise State season all year was 14 yards. It was one time. Regard, uh, other than that, Boise State's had no punt return. They've really had not much of a kick return game. Dudley's done an okay job, but he's only averaging about 20.3 yards per kick return. He's had a couple of, you know, 30, 40-ish range kick returns. They kind of got them out to the, the mid-30s, but no long kick returns that have put your offense in a position to go out and score quickly. Boise State is going to need that in this game. Something's going to have to come alive in the return game to crack the difference, to match the difference in the scale between what Air Force is putting out offensively, defensively, what Boise State's putting out offensively and defensively to tip the scale in Boise State's direction. They're going to need some big plays in special teams. And this is going to be one of those positions where I think Boise State could really, really thrive as the punt return game. I think that they could make some next steps. You know, Halani was never really able to do anything versus Washington because he got injured so early. But he had an eight-yard return last week, and he definitely is explosive back there. If something happens to him, you have Ashton Genty to take over in the running game so you can use George Halani to his max and I think that Boise State has a chance here to maybe do something in the return game that I think might end up being a key to success for Boise State to win so three keys beat Air Force at their own game scheme for the big play and the return game has got to come alive now who's going to win this matchup well Air Force is not a hundred percent coming into this game but that doesn't matter it doesn't matter if Air Force is coming off of a, you know, three and seven season before they played Boise State, or if they're undefeated, which they have been, but like 10 win type season coming into Boise, it doesn't matter. Regardless, there Boise State's going to struggle versus Air Force because it's an offense you don't see very often, and they hit you at Boise State's weak points. I mean, Boise State doesn't have a lot of depth right now across the board defensively, and they are going to have to put some players out there who haven't gotten a lot of playing time this season. Boise State's also got a lot of injuries on defense as well, which is going to play into Air Force's hands. So it doesn't matter that they're potentially without their two primary offensive players. It's the offensive scheme itself that makes Air Force so dangerous combined with the players but more the scheme than it is the players themselves so Boise State's going to be in a position where they're probably going to be fighting for their lives to win this game however they are at an advantage in some areas one obviously they're at home I wish it was at night I think if this game was at night under the lights that Jeremiah Dickey has put in this would be a guaranteed win now that Spencer Downson's in charge. I will clarify that. With Andy Avalos, I thought this was going to be a loss. I said, it doesn't matter what happens, this is going to be a loss. But now that Spencer Downson has taken over, we saw a different Boise State last week. That win versus Utah State was not just a win, it was a dominant win in all phases, and it was a Boise State win. We finally looked like Boise State. The offense looked better than I've seen them all season. The defense had a actual statistical career performance. I mean, the most sacks ever in a game uh, for Boise State, at least since entering the FBS in 1996. So the defense, the offense, especially in Spencer Downson is getting the maximum potential out of these players. They are playing their best for him. And Boise State finally schemed correctly on offense and defense to get the max out of these guys. So Boise State has its best chance to win versus Air Force with Spencer Downson at the helm. It's at home on the blue, even if it isn't under the lights. The lights have... Boise State's not lost under the lights since Jeremiah Dickey put them in. 
I credit the San Jose State win a large part to the momentum shift in energy and crowd movement after the lights uh, came on and Boise State was able to kind of shift the tide of that game. So again, I wish it was on the lights. It's not, but it's still at Boise State. It looks like it's going to be a sellout. It's on senior night. Boise State's players are playing for something right now that is more than just winning a game. I mean, this is the soul of the team that they're playing for. The, they, they, they've they said they don't want to just go down as a footnote for this program. They want to prove that this season, with all of its weirdness and its disappointments, doesn't have to be a season that is forgotten. This can still be a special year for Boise State, and that's for their, what they're playing for when they get out on this field. So Boise State right now, I think, is more energized to win this game. Air Force is coming off of a three-game losing streak. <coughs> Boise State's coming off of a two-game winning streak and looks to be playing better than they have all season, whereas Air Force has injuries at key positions and is headed in a downward track. These two teams right now are going to be one of the best games you watch this weekend between Boise State and Air Force. One of the best games on Friday, one of the best games you watch this weekend, and I think the winner of this, I'm convinced the winner of this, will go play in the Mountain West Championship game. This is the Mountain West Championship game before it becomes that. This is the prequel for the Mountain West Championship game. This is one of the most important score predictions all year. I am predicting a Boise State win, a narrow one. Boise State wins 27 to 24, and they have one more game to play for before playing for a bowl game. So for Boise State, this is a game that I am very, very excited about. I can't wait to see what ends up happening here. This is going to be a tough one, but Boise State's in a better position now than they were a couple of weeks ago. And Spencer Johnson definitely has his team moving in the right direction. So for me, I have faith in the blue. The power of the blue is going to get this job won. But more than that, the power of these players and the faith that Spencer Johnson puts in them and the faith that they put in him is what's going to go out and get this win. And Bronco Nation, if you show up and you support and you sell out the blue, I think you'll be in your seats to support and be part of something very special. So thanks so much for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe. Make sure you put your comments uh, in the comments below and let me know your thoughts on this matchup. And as always, Go Big Blue!